This episode of Biters is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. To biters, this is Marnell, and this week I am joined by a special guest. That's right, it's Phil. It's not Diane. It is not. Diane is on a much needed vacation. Uh, so yeah, she's gonna sit this one out. Uh, I've got Phil from Capes and Lunatics. That's right. We are podcasting season four, episode 12 uh, of Fear the Walking Dead week. I got the meaning it when after I watched the episode, but before I watched it, I'm like, shouldn't this have been a title of one of the episodes from the first three seasons? <laughs> the all the entire first three seasons were weak. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but I thought there was a couple of meanings. I mean, the the filthy woman, which I absolutely hate that name. Like, I'm gonna call her like alternate universe Michonne, because like. She's got the pet walkers and everything. Michonne's mom. <laughs> Michonne's crazy mom. Um, but so all the references that she made to people being weak and I'm not weak and you made them weak and you're not weak anymore. And she's just very set on this whole weakness trip. Um, but then, of course, Althea became weak in the episode. And plus and- Everyone's walkie had like a weak signal. Right. And June was working through her weaknesses because she's so insecure about her place in the world at this point. So, yeah, I think uh, the episode kind of everyone encompassed weakness in the episode. But, yeah. So, do you have a rating for us? I know that you don't take notes or anything crazy like that. Oh, um (laughs) No, this is good. I would say, hmm, I'd probably give it a 4.5 mile marker signs. (laughs) I gave it a 3.8 dead batteries. Ooh. Yeah, so I rated it a little bit lower. This, it was, it was sort of a middle book episode. Um, Yeah, I, there was... Oh, sorry, I was going to say, I I kind of liked it, but I'm wondering if they're setting up like a future status quo because we did not get any of our original cast in this episode. Yeah, and you know, we've been talking about how that's been a great thing that they've moved away from. I mean, they've completely flipped the cast. I mean, we only have two original characters um, left and we, we didn't see those, even though we seem to be focusing, we're, we're broken up at this point. And we seek, seem to be focusing on one group at a time, um, I guess, until we're all back together again, which is what we did in the beginning of the season. So it just, it's sort of the same, you know, they, they do that in Walking Dead Prime too, where they split everyone up and then they focus on a couple people or a group or two. Mm-hmm. And then they bring everyone back together for something huge. And then somehow we all get split up again. But so our writer this episode, uh, Di and I talked about last episode, Alex DeLille, uh, major writer in this season of Fear the Walking Dead. And of course, our director was Coleman Domingo. Yeah. If, uh, if you watched The Talking Dead, it was all Coleman all the time, which I think he did an amazing job. And if you have not seen it, go to his Twitter and find the sock puppet that he was talking about. It's hilarious. Um, so I think he did a really great job directing the episode. And it, I think it was probably a great start for him that he directed an episode that he wasn't starring in. So we'll see if that comes up in the future. But so that was our writer director. And I believe, ep- but I thought that didn't they, wasn't there a thing on the talking dead? Like, was that that inside the dead thing? I think they said he's the first walking dead actor to actually, uh, 
direct for the series for any of those series. That doesn't surprise me that he's the first to direct, the first actor direct. But we've had a lot of people who have switched roles. Um, Robert Kirkman was originally, um, what was he, a, sh- a show director and then a showrunner, a showrunner then director. But they all just sort of kind of keep it within the, um, not only just the Walking Dead universe, but the AMC universe as well. So mm-hmm. they they tend to promote from within, which I encourage. Um, featured cast member was kind of you and I didn't discuss this. Uh, I chose it to be Quinn because he died. <laughs> um, I, I was actually I was really hoping you know we all yeah, Quinn came in and we were like yay we have a new character you know like Al- Althea says I like new people. Um, mm-hmm. and then he died, but he may make an additional appearance because now he's the filthy woman's pet. So. Um, actor Charles Harrison, uh, he doesn't have much on his IMDb profile and he really needs to get a new picture for his IMDb profile. It's awful. It's from Swamp Shark, the movie Swamp Shark that he was in. Um, the, uh, the major acting credits for him seem to be Fear the Walking Dead and, uh, a couple episodes of Army Wives. And a couple episodes of Graceland, both of which I do not watch. But he's big in the Tampa, Florida theater, and he enjoys the outdoors, hiking, uh, just even jogging around the neighborhood, camping, going to the beach, that kind of thing. So not much about him, but the Walking Dead universe and any AMC show seems to be a huge catalyst for people's careers. So hopefully he this gives him a big bump. Yeah, maybe maybe it's like the beginning of his career. There's not that many roles, but I I don't know. I saw his character as like a plot. I don't want to say a plot device, but like he was supposed to be June. That's her name now, right? June was supposed to be like her her right. reflection and her coming to terms with stuff, and then boom, he's dead. Yep. And Jen Elfman even said on Talking Dead that she made him watch her episodes that she you know, yeah. kind of identified his character with and, you know, wanted him to go through the same thing. And then boom, he's dead. So <laughs> poor Quinn. But um, yeah, I can't remember what I was going to. Oh, I loved that. Uh, Cause we always joke about June having so many names. She was June and Laura and some, somebody else. I can't remember the other. She has so many names and I love that he called her Cipro. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like of any nickname now like momo or jimbo i like cipro <laughs> momo, momo. But, oh. um, but no i mean you know i'm i'm like hardcore into this podcast because the first thing i see jenna elfman sitting on the uh, couch for talking dead i'm like oh there's Th- there's thomas amara's friend <laughs> yes yes i i just i love her uh i love her as an actress and not only as the character in the show now. Um, I'm so glad they went with her. Um, I still see her as Dharma because I was a big Dharma and Greg fan. <laughs> but like I said on the last episode, um, her and uh, uh, Jeff uh, from the podcast also. Mm, um, yeah. yeah. So, so what was your good? What was my good? Um, I t- hmm. Would you like me to go first? Sure, go ahead. Because I take notes and I, I have this all prepared. <laughs> so um, I'm really glad that June and Althea made it back to Morgan. Because, yeah. you know, we it's, it's a little difficult a lot of times to have the individual or duo centric episodes. And I'm really glad they bounced back and forth this episode. We saw with um, Alicia and uh, Charlie, you know, they had their own entire episode and that one kind of dragged. And then you had the Morgan one, but with Morgan, we introduced a bunch of new characters. So that wasn't just a Morgan centric episode. So this episode, when they had June and Al, I'm glad it didn't just focus on June and Al. Cause even in the beginning, when they were going through June and Al being in the swap van and the little montage of them being there day after day, that was a little, that was a little grinding. And yeah. so I'm glad we were able to get 
um, everyone back with Morgan and all the new people together with them. And we'll go forward from there and hopefully find the rest of our group. But I'm just really glad that we're all getting back together. We've only got four episodes left for the season. So um, I'm thinking things are going to start ramping up. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that was my good. I'd say my good part was probably June's whole journey in this episode. I'm, it was good. I like that she's kind of redeeming herself and I don't know, just the way she was, you know, with the new guy before he got killed. I thought, I don't know. I, I'm afraid to throw this out. Is she becoming a moral compass on this? She is. I think so. I think she's going to kind of, she's taking over Ma- kind of Madison's role, I think. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's kind of a scary position. Um, and to know that we flipped a lot of our, our cast, you know, could this potentially be the takeover of the new characters? Well, that's what I'm wondering if they're setting her up to be like a leader. Cause like I was saying before, I, I don't know if maybe the writings on the wall with these original characters, are they either going to die or is some, are people going to go with Morgan or uh, Alicia and strand going to go with Morgan? Maybe to the regular, to the regular walking dead. Right. And so have you listened to the last episode of Biters? Oh, yes, I did. Non Bushman of Alaska. Yes, I did. <laughs> Which they they didn't. Uh, I don't think they beat us this week, but uh, we are the numbers for this. The numbers for the code did slip slightly from the week before. So okay. we're on a steady decline, but that's sort of to be expected. We're already confirmed for season five. So no big deal there. Don't know about season six, but what Di and I talked about in the last episode was that, and the showrunners for Walking Dead have not ruled it out that we could potentially see additional crossover characters from Fear the Walking Dead or The Walking Dead. Mm. And Di and I talked about how we kind of feel that maybe one of the shows is going to end and they'll consolidate the people who want to continue on with the walking dead universe into one show. Hmm. Um, yeah. So I could totally see that happening with June and Morgan and a couple of others ending up in Alexandria. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. I think some of them might go, they might be there for season nine because who knows with time jumps and, how this this season ends but i mean we're getting at least one more season of fear so maybe yeah i mean i'm sure jenna elfman can uh commands a hefty well not a hefty but a healthy salary you know so maybe they want her as this focus for the next season right more than say somebody like quinn <laughs> yes <laughs> um so my bad was the van i like I'm just, everything that had to do with the van. So one, like Chris Hardwick said on Talking Dead, like quit leaving your keys in it. Like quit leaving it unsecured altogether. Like you should shut the, nobody should be able to get into it. Like all your stuff's in there. I mean, even if they didn't steal the van, they could have looted it. Uh, And then also the whole truck chasing the SWAT van was a little like a dog chasing a car. Nah. If she caught up to it, what was she going to do when she got it? Like, that's what that's what I was thinking. I'm like, you can't ram that thing. You can, no, you know. can't run it off the road. If he figured out how to work the guns, you were dead. Like, what are you doing? As, yeah. he, as long as he doesn't open the door, it could, you know, wait you out. Yeah. Right. And where did Quinn get diesel that they didn't have diesel? Is he just walking around with like a one gallon can of diesel on his back? Because it was, it was on the bus. <laughs> but he had it before that because he got to the bus. Uh, yeah. yeah, they had to chase him to the bus. And so somehow he had enough diesel to go, what, 20 miles maybe? And then he ran out of diesel. But like he just came upon a SWAT van and he happened to have diesel. So kind of everything surrounding the SWAT van, I was just, it was a little like, really? Okay, whatever. It's, it, Yeah. There was a couple of un- other unbelievable things in the episode, which I will get to, but that was my bad. Did you I mean, have one? 
Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it kind of goes in the same direction as my bad. It's just Al's obsession with the van, which I understand it's an impressive vehicle for the zombie apocalypse. It's high, it's armored, it's got the guns. But, I mean, she treats that thing like it's her lover. She's like, oh, we got to get that van back. So I kind of get the whole, like, she's got to get the, because, I mean, one, it's her home. It's yeah. where those tapes are, which the tapes seem to be the big thing. Um, but. You know, it's, I almost see it like kind of as her child or her pet or, you know, like her lover. Like it's, it's been there since the beginning with her, as far as we know. I understand, but it's not a living thing. Right. And that was June's point is, you know, you have to move on. Like you're alive now and, and you can, you can get to other people who are alive and going to help people, you know, and Mm -hmm. we could get the van back if we do this other thing, but she was so hyper-focused on the dang van. Yeah. And I mean, the obsession went so far, she lied about the medicine being on there. And then June almost killed somebody for medicine that wasn't even there. Okay. One, I believed that there was medicine. Why why wouldn't you? If she has everything in that van, like, of course she's got medicine, you know, like Unless, unless she ran out. Yeah. Totally believable lie. And I'm kind of not surprised that she lied, but yes, I, as June, I would be angry and disappointed that she lied to me and risked my life and also risked me killing another person for, for the van, not even like the van with antibiotics in it, just the van, you yeah. know, it, I, I would have gone out there for the van and antibiotics, but if it was just the van, no, like my mission is to get you well and get us to Morgan. So, yeah. I agree. The van, the van is a character that needs to die soon. It's, it's been a plot device and it's, it's done its job and now it just needs to go. That sounds like a season finale type thing. Like, uh, how they lost the RV in the, at the, uh, season finale of season two of walking dead. How'd they lose the RV? Remember that it was on the farm and everything was like on fire and zombies were everywhere. Oh, that's right. That's right. And it got overrun with zombies. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I was also thinking of um, the U-Haul truck in season three or four of The Walking Dead. The U-Haul full of supplies that Daryl and when they were uh, first met Jesus, Daryl and and Rick, it like goes, it just into a big old pond and just gets submerged. And yeah, I think we need to drown the swap vehicle. Especially if we're so, gonna that especially if we're gonna that semi for a while. That's right. We are we are on semi. Speaking of well, we'll, we'll get to it. <laughs> Speaking of semis, um, <laughs> don't don't go there. I was not being dirty until Phil went dirty. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Pervert. <laughs> Phil and I, for those listening at home, Phil and I are doing this via Google Hangouts. You can go see it on his Capes and Lunatics, Lunatics YouTube channel if you want to watch us make funny faces at each other, which Phil just did, which is why I giggled <laughs> when I said semi because I meant semi truck and Phil took it someplace else. So, ugly, not Phil. Ugly is like, what was your ugly? Uh, mine was the filthy lady like yes yes and a good ugly i we haven't had a big bad in a few seasons that's on the same level as the saviors or negan or even the governor but this lady like i i kind of thought maybe "Mm, give her a chance like she looks bad but maybe "Mm, yeah and she's got a crazy walker pet or whatever but she is poisoning water Mm-hmm. Like nothing good can come of her at this point, and right? She, and she killed what's his, is his face, Owen Quinn. 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 Yes. Quinn. Yeah. Quinn. Yes. And uh, Purvis. Yes. Who are? Do we believe that Purvis was the original owner of the semi truck? I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I I kind of think because there's been a couple of things that have been said that have eluded me to believe that Purvis was the original driver of the truck. Something about, she said this episode, something about you made them weak and it was something about the boxes. And, and so I kind of think he was the person who was dropping the boxes at the four, the mile markers at the four at the end. And 
So, yeah, she killed the good guy, and now she's also poisoning uh, people's water in these supply boxes. So, yeah, I'm kind of going to walk back my, I think she might be kind of good, just crazy. No, she's bad. No, no. Because I think with every other, like, Walking Dead villain, most of them are have, like, at least a some sanity. Yeah, no, this is like a Batman villain. She's completely not. Yeah, you know, she's she's not... Um, you're not going to be able to reason with her. She's completely insane. No, because, I mean, even the governor with his, his fish tanks full of walker heads and his daughter chained up in the closet, his walker daughter, um, he still, like, you know, wanted to help people and do some good and, and did chili cookouts. And, no, this lady is... Yeah, Off all the, the rails. All those guys, you could like bow down and like, he's like, if you kiss the ring or whatever, they're going to let you live. This one, you could do everything she said and she still might kill you. Yeah. Yeah. If she, like, if in her crazy mind you're weak, then mm-hmm. she's going to kill you and, and make her your new, her new walker pet. Yeah. Which did, did you notice what she's using to, to lead her walker pets around? It's one of those loops that, uh, dog catchers Dogs, use. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, that works. Because she's not doing what Michonne did, where she disarticulates the jaw and then severs the arms. Mm -mm. So she's got to be able to keep them away from her, whereas Michonne could have them on chains because they weren't going to hurt her. But, yeah. Interesting. And now she has the van. And now she has the van. So, um there have been two articles. Uh, We're we're now into rotting potpourri, I believe. Unless okay. you have any more ugly to contribute. No, my ugly was was that woman good and like, I don't know, kind of the bad was like Morgan should have known she was nuts. <laughs> Momo. You know, though, having been kind of in the weeds of craziness himself, who's he to mm. judge? Yeah. True. Yeah. You caught me on a dehydrated day. I'm going to get some water and then I'll be sane. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or... <laughs> I'll get some wine, <laughs> which yeah. I have my giant wine glass here. Holy crap. That for people who can't see it, that glass is almost as big as her head. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. Um, so uh, there was a really good, there was a really good article. And then there was a really bad article by Uprox. Uh, the really good article had um, a really good fan theory about the filthy woman and her being our big bad. And who else may be involved in being the bad guy this this season? Hmm. And I'm going to make you all go read the Uproxx article about it. I'm not going to give it away if you don't want to know. But it does, and this might give it away, it does involve the filthy lady getting hold of the van. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. They've, they've alluded, the showrunners have alluded to... Um, kind of the filthy lady knows more about the people uh in the walking dead the fear of the walking dead world than even they know about themselves so kind of thinking what the van contains may go towards that hmm. but the other uh, the other article by up rocks they were talking about the radios this episode and how last episode, Morgan was able to talk to the filthy lady, you know, who's hundreds of miles away with these radios and how they couldn't even talk to each other less than 50 miles away this episode. Well, I have a bone to pick with them in that the uh, radios that they were using in the truck stops and really? in the trucks, because even the filthy lady on her dash, they were single sideband radios. Yeah. And yeah, and so they're going to pick up a lot more frequencies and they're going to pick up stuff from further away. The handhelds aren't. No. And so they they kind of tried to catch, the Uproxx tried to kind of catch their, the, uh, a little bit of a, a, it's, um, a little bit of something and they didn't do their, their research on radios. Because um, those other ones probably have bigger antennas. You they know. do better power supply it's yeah they're yeah. Gonna, they're gonna be more powerful the trucks are gonna have whippet antennas on mm-hmm. their mirrors and the uh ones at the truck stops are gonna have base antennas and yeah the handheld ones aren't gonna do crap you're right about that but there are different kinds of radios and i mean even getting up to ham radios where you're gonna get uh vhf and uhf and uh 
all of the other, uh, there's two other things that I can't think of, but yeah, you can pick up radio signals from like around the world. It's okay. Like there's different radios and they are using different radios. So don't call them out on that unless you're doing your research. So that was just my little bone to pick with up, up rocks, but go read the article about the filthy lady on there. Oh, but not to change the subject too much, but, um, I do go right ahead. We are in writing potpourri. All right. Well, I do, I do agree with you. I did notice the same thing you mentioned last episode about the, the different voice announcer for the walking dead stuff. It's so weird. Yeah. Cause I remember seeing her hearing it. And I like turned to my wife. I was like, I was like, wait a minute. That's the different guy. I'm like, what are they trying to pull here? Yeah, it's it's like the um like the let's get ready to rumble guy at the at the beginning of, of boxing matches or, or wrestling matches or yeah, whatever. It, like it's not like it, not as deep of a voice and it's like it, but it's like changing that or it's it's like changing the um the the voices on on the beginning of trailers and like there there's just voices that you identify with and all of a sudden we've changed it and I I kind of am curious to know what happened to the guy, the original guy with the deeper voice, the, the gravelier voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it's it's very weird. I thought for one episode it was just going to be a one off. Maybe the guy was sick or or I, I don't know. Like, but this has been like three or four episodes now where the the no- announcers changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very weird. And all and also the the other thing since we're here is like it, watching Talking Dead. Have you kind of caught that like? I don't know. Chris Hardwick's trying to be business as usual, but I guess after his recent troubles, he's uh, he's trying not to go too over the top, like funny or like you know. Sometimes yeah. he's like, "Hey, what are you talking about?" And now he's just like, "Okay, yeah." yeah, yeah. Well, you know. and there was a there was a joke last um, on the one after the code. Last, um, there was some very sexual in the innuendo innuendo jokes like we did just now with the uh the semi semi trucks uh, i don't remember what it was about but he was just sort of like staying quiet and nodding mm-hmm. his head He's basically yeah. like i i am i like you know i will let this play out with the three people on the couch but i'm not going to make any additions to this conversation and we will move on very quickly from it yes. yeah so I remember back in the day, him telling people, eh, get off my junk. And I was just like, yeah, no sexual innuendo. Nice, yes. even tone. Doesn't get too high. He's done his best behavior. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I, this episode uh, with the, the whole Coleman Domingo director puppet, I do. I Chris made the, the comment, talking puppets. I would love to see that. Yeah. Talking dead with sock puppets. That would be amazing. I, I'm all for that. Which actor would you like to see portrayed in, as Sock Puppet? <laughs> well, I did go see Happy Time Murders last week. Oh, yeah? Is that good? Yeah. No, yeah. it was awful. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those where they put all of the funny stuff in the trailer. And it was a lot more serious than I expected it to be. Hmm. It was funny and silly, and I'm glad I didn't pay full price to go see it because it was the the last night it was going to be here, so it's discount. So, yeah, it was it was not great. It, all the funny stuff was in the trailer. If you just go watch the trailer for it, you'll you'll get the movie. But oh. yeah, but no, you know who I want to see a sock puppet? It's all those British people, sock puppets <laughs> with British accents. <laughs> oh yes, this scene when we go out to this scene. British and Australian accents, yeah. That's funny. Momo, Rick, all of them. Momo. I can't believe he doesn't like Momo. <laughs> I love it. I also liked my quip last episode, we're not in Kansas anymore, Momo. <laughs> and I love he goes for his walk and they're like, well, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> She's like, oh, I guess we're tailgating. Tailgating, yep. <laughs> when he's when he's basically like, can you not call me that? And she's like, no, I like it too much. <laughs> yeah, the, I, I love him. Um, and I'm still curious as to how Wendell is getting in and out of the truck. Yeah. That can't be easy. I mean, like legitimately because the actor is in a wheelchair. Daryl mm-hmm. Chill Mitchell is in a wheelchair. Um, and then just in the show that he, he has to be, um, they have to be helping him. I don't think there's a lift or anything in the truck. So 
I kind of would like to see that address because it kind of sounds like him and his sister, Mo, uh, Sarah, um, have been, you know, doing this for a while. And what's funny is they actually, there was a little bit of a thing in the this episode where they did allude to, they do have, they, they, they referred to dad, um, a car rides with dad. And so they legitimately could be siblings, even if they're adopted siblings or foster siblings or, half. you know, yeah, half siblings. So uh, that's going to be interesting to see that play out that, you know, she has, you know, they have been together this entire time for the apocalypse taking care of each other. And um, so, you know, see, originally we thought they were bad, but they're not so far, maybe. And just like switch out uh, the guy who makes the beer with someone who makes wine, and that would be like your partner in the zombie apocalypse, right? Oh, I was drinking beer earlier. Oh, were you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I switched to wine for the show <laughs> just so that I could show you my giant glass. Yeah, <sighs> any alcohol really? Uh, didn't alcohol start as a way to purify water? Which is something that we're going to need if Crazy Chick is going to be contaminating all the water. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, so when they were doing the montage of Al and June in the truck, there's a scene where they're taking a drink of water and June has um, like a canteen that Mm. she's drinking out of. And then they show Al and screw the lid of a bottle of water. And so I'm wondering if that's one of the bottles of water from one of the boxes that the filthy lady, a uh, filthy woman, contaminated, and that's what made Al sick. Why didn't they get that beforehand? But like at the end, when they catch up with Momo and everyone in the truck, mm-hmm. and he's like handing them water, and I, and I think I saw I, like Al took took a swig of some water they gave her. So I'm wondering if now we're gonna see it because. Well. That water's not contaminated yet. It's still, it's, that just came from the back of the truck. She's contaminating okay. the boxes on the side yeah. of the road. Yeah. And Althea did come across a box on the side of the road. Mm. And I don't know if they took any water out of it, but they were spending days in those trucks where they were just, you know, walking as far as they could go and then back to the truck. So reason stands that they can't, you know, at some point they've come across one of those boxes, taken water out of it. And June just happened to be drinking out of a canteen that was there. And Althea chose to drink the water from the boxes. Mm. That's what made her sick. Mm. And yeah. So, and I, I caught that on the rewatch that Al was drinking out of a bottle of water and June was drinking out of a canteen and Al was the one that got sick. So yeah. Um, what do you think's behind that? Why do you think she wants to make people sick from drinking the water? Because if you're strong, you'll live through it. If but if you're weak, you'll die. Or if you have access to uh, augmentin or cipro, which, by the way, apparently even expired antibiotics, you only need to take two, and in like an hour, you're fine. Right? Yeah. That was my other. That was my other kind of like like the van. You know, like really you're going to take two antibiotics and you're going to be fine it expired probably years expired antibiotics and you're going to be fine in two hours oh well if we go that far i mean half these most of these vehicles shouldn't be starting up after all this time and oh i know yeah gas isn't going to fire spark plugs aren't going to go and Mm. i did like how they got a flat from hitting a bump in the road because yes that's that's legit i mean rubber breaks down over time and all of these vehicles should start getting flat tires at some point. So either that or just like even this year, a lot of states have had bad potholes. I mean, yeah, hit, you know, no one's maintaining these roads. You hit a bad pothole. It's going to pop your tire. Domino's is. Have you seen their new ad campaign? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can call Domino's and they will come out and fix the road so that your pizza arrives home safely. But cha- talking about speaking of changing the tire, that was like, I think one of the most uh, badass kills that we've seen is uh, her, Al dropping the car on the walker's head. <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. After it broke its own leg off to come get her. I loved that. And I love to know that it's uh, the stuff that they used to, to stick the walker in the quote unquote mud was the milkshake thickener. 
because that's right. the same stuff on um, Alien, uh, the the movie Alien, the the mm-hmm. uh, they this the that like stuff that drips down off the alien. They if that's milkshake thickener, yeah. like I think that is so funny that they use that so much in movies and TVs, and it's something that like people drink on a daily basis. <laughs> Like, hey, if it looks good on camera, hey. <laughs> oh god, the stuff we put in our bodies. As I'm taking a huge swig of wine. Well, I was gonna say I'd rather be stuck if we, if he's like after probably stuck for hours in there. I'd rather be stuck in like milkshake thick in there uh, rather than like some chemicals they mix together to make something like that. I just, I, you know, I I don't know what is in the milkshake thickener. Yeah. I don't know if there's like any sort of sugar or anything, but I'm just like, oh man, imagine like being knee deep in that crud for hours shooting a, during the day on a hot day. Hot day. Yeah. And if there's anything that's going to attract flies, that's going to oh, be awful. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of walkers and attracting flies, so the walker that they take out of the truck and uh, they're driving down the road and June's trying to get people on the radio and Althea's like, well, why don't you roll down the window? And, and you know, and I'm like, why wouldn't you have the windows rolled down anyway? There's been a walker trapped in that truck for probably months. <laughs> Got to smell. Like, I can't even stand, like, too much of my dog's breath in my car and I roll down the windows, you know? Yeah, but I, at, th- at this point, years into it, I'm sure everything probably smells like walker by now. Oh, that's true. Yeah, everything smells like decomp. You probably, probably you can't tell anymore. Probably, no. it, it probably, it probably, smells, you know, nothing hits your nose like that it's, unless it's like, hey, wait, it smells good. What? <laughs> <laughs> it smells like milkshakes. <laughs> and where's Al getting all her food? Because she was talking about her blood sugar being down. She's like, oh, it's been a while since I've, you know, I think she was haven't had a full that. belly. I think that she was sort of using that as a beard for covering for yeah. being so sick. Um, yeah, I don't think she wanted to leave the van. And then when she left the van, I think it was just kind of like, oh, I'm not that sick. It's fine. Mm-hmm. And then she started vomiting and we realized that she had like Giardia or something. But seriously, if she's that obsessed with that van, why, would, why wouldn't you take the keys with you? Every, and whenever you, even if you're like 10 feet away from that truck, I'd be taking the keys with me. Well, and she did in the beginning because um, she, every time somebody tried to take the keys from her, she'd give her the footlocker key, the footlocker keys. Mm-hmm. And so they'd get in the truck and they'd be like, these aren't the keys. And she'd be like, I know, you know. <laughs> so, like, she's totally lost her edge. I don't know if it's the influence of being around other people or what, because she's she doesn't seem to be very social. Um, we got to we seem to be getting her backstory in bits and pieces. Um so I kind of think that those tapes are super important to her. And she talked about, you know, um, people that she loved are on those tapes. So it'll be, it'll be interesting in the future to see how her story unravels. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I have this feeling that they're going to take her and June and probably the truck crew and maybe make them the, the uh, core group for next season when everyone else goes to Alexandria or dies. <laughs> you don't think uh uh Alicia and Strand, our two only remaining cast members, will be there? I don't know. I'm like I said, I think they might either get killed one or both of them may get killed or go to Alexandria. Yeah, I could see it. Because I mean, unlike the unlike the regular series, I don't think anyone most people I don't think have that have an opinion of the first couple seasons that they're like oh, i want these characters to stay and especially if they're on a, on the other show you know people are their fans are still going to get them well and these were the two characters where i i you know i i had my problems with alicia in the beginning because she was a stupid teenager oh, yeah. radioing other stupid teenage with what she thought was stupid teenagers on a boat but turned out to be pirates um and then, of course, Strand has always been the, is he good? Is he bad? Sometimes he's good. Sometimes he's in it for himself, which isn't necessarily bad, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so they've been the two most interesting characters as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I, I would love to see them continue, but they also also seem to be the two people that seem to have 
careers that are taking off. I mean, um, Alicia Debno Carey has uh, a lot of movies that are coming out soon, and so does um, Coleman Domingo. And it looks like Coleman Domingo is going to start to direct more, so he could go behind the camera on AMC. True. And I mean, they true, they are rising stars. And on that main series, we're losing a couple of our main people. So, right, right. Um, it looks like uh, Daryl Dixon's going to be our, our main guy for a while. Uh, he's he's demanding a pretty hefty paycheck and he got something that he's wanted for quite a while. Uh, the rumors have been confirmed. Whisperer's Corner that uh, Daryl Dixon will be getting a companion in season nine. Oh. He's getting a dog. Yay. Oh, really? Yep. So Daryl Dixon will have a uh, canine companion for season nine. And, of course, Diane's wish comes true, and there will be more horses on the show. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, if they follow the comic, eventually they're all going to go horses because most of these cars aren't going to be running. Right. Right, which I'm so glad, because that's been, that's been one of my main things for a while is, you know, I leave my, my snowblower or my lawnmower in the, the shed for, you know, uh, half the year. And yeah. if I haven't drained it of its gas or if I haven't put any uh, treatment in the, the engine, you know, it doesn't fire up. And yeah. that's like six months. Yeah, this has that's... been three, four years into the uh, apocalypse. Yeah, that's like the that's like here. If you leave your lawnmower in the cold garage for the winter months, yeah, a lot of times it doesn't start off. Yep, yep. So that's been one of my main gripes. So I'm I'm kind of glad they're they're moving to horses, and yeah. I'm glad that Daryl's finally getting a buddy. Have they mentioned anything about Jeffrey Dean Morgan? I would think with Andrew Lincoln leaving, they would like offer him like a bigger pay to stay. I don't know. Because I don't know what they're going to do with the Negan character. They Yeah, they haven't. Like, I don't think I've seen anything about that. No. I mean, like, my my thing was, is I thought they can't go the way of the comic book where they're going to keep him in Alexandria. They're going to have to kill uh, Negan because Jeffrey Dean Morgan's, you know, a bigger name actor. He's going to, you know, not do want to do a lot of work or keep coming back to set or... You know, uh, so they, they're going to have to kill. No, they didn't. And so mm -hmm. they are going to go, as far as we know, this, the comic book storyline where Negan is going to continue to be in Alexandria and he's going to continue to have a role in The Walking Dead. So, yeah, it'll be interesting if they try and turn him good and have him take over or if it's going to be Daryl. Because, of course, it's not going to be Maggie. Mm -mm. it's going to have to be Daryl or Michonne or maybe someone from Fear the Walking Dead will cross over and take over. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, yeah. see strand button, button heads with some people. <sighs> that would be interesting. Uh -huh. Yeah. Then Morgan have to, Morgan having to keep telling everyone, this is, he's a nice guy. No, 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 no. I know. I know how he gets sometimes. But, <laughs> no, he's, decent. he's basically a decent guy. Yeah. yeah. You, you got to give him a chance. Mo Mo. Momo. So, did you have anything else? Um, I don't believe so. Yeah, I think that was all that I had. Like I said, this episode was a little bit of a middle book. Um, we have four episodes left, so we are ramping up to the season finale. And then season premiere of Walking Dead Prime will be on October 7th. Oh, yes. Earlier than usual, yes. Yeah, like by two or three weeks. Yeah. So, thank you for joining us, Phil. Where can Fighters fans find you? Well, thank you, the, the royal us. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, <laughs> us as, as, as in the Biters crew. I know. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, if anyone wants to, uh, you can always check me out and my friends on the Capes and Lunatics and the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks. And as Marnell said, we have a YouTube channel where you can find this video, so... You could see the gigantic glass of wine Marnell has. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I don't want to say it's huge, but it has its own gravitational pull. And it pulls me right in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I that was coming. Ah, we're so clever. But yes, thank you for having me. I always enjoy talking to you. Yeah, 
like I said last week, fresh meat for the grinder is always good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Terminus. <laughs> so, you can find uh, Biters at Facebook.com slash Biters or on Twitter, Biters. Uh, and you can like us, give us a follow, Southgate Media Group, Patreon.com. Uh, give us money, give us likes, share us. <laughs> oh, every once in a while, I gotta get a plug in there. But until then, take it one dead day at a time. At a time. See, we don't even try to sync up. We just I know. We go with it. But have a good week, everybody. Bye. Bye.